Hi, this is uh, 6.8, uh, Uninhibited Growth and Decay, and this is actually first part of 6.8, the second part of 6.8 will follow, and, um, but this one is uh, basically bound using this formula right here, and it's n equals n sub 0 e to the kt. Now before I get uh, into this very far, you might want to go ahead and um, uh, do a full screen on your window because when I hit this example in a minute, the words are kind of small. I had to run pretty small to get it on this little whiteboard here. And uh, so you might want to do a full screen on this. Anyway, so, so this is the formula, n equals n sub 0 e to the kt. And let me kind of tell you what these uh, the variables are representing. n sub 0, now that sub 0 is just a, basically a time 0. So it's just a variable. They could have used a or whatever they want to use. but uh, what the answer of zero is the initial amount at time zero. That's what that little subscript is. And then n is the amount at the end of the period. So, so you begin with something and you end with something at a certain time. And t is the time. Now k could be two things. It's a growth rate if k turned out to be a positive number. It's going to be a decay rate if k is a negative number. So you, when you're encountering a problem, you don't even have to read into the problem at all. You just look at the formula, and you know the k. If you know the k, you know it's going to be a growth rate if it's positive. You know it's going to be a decay rate if it's negative. So it's very simple to determine which one's which. And um, when when k is a growth rate, n will be bigger than what you start with, n sub zero, which makes sense. Your your whatever you have is growing in nature, and so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's more than what you started with. But if it's decaying, it's disintegrating. So things that grow would be like bacteria, populations, uh, money, uh, possibly. So, uh, the, but the key word when you talk about growth rate is something called the doubling time. Because a lot of times you don't know how much, how long it would take for whatever you have to double. So if you have a population in a city of a thousand, small city, uh, you might want to know when it doubles. In that case, it would be two thousand. So, and if it's a decay rate when k is negative, in that case, what you end up with would be less than what you start with. So, uh, things like that would be like radioactive substances, and, yeah, and in some cases, populations as well. Uh, something that's very uh, uh, common, you probably won't get through a science class in high school without hearing the word carbon dating, carbon-14. That's not, but it's, it's radioactive substances and things that disintegrate. So, and the key word for that is half-life. So it's kind of counterpart of doubling time. Doubling time is how long it takes to double. Half-life is how long it takes to half itself. So, so these, these are the key words for the respective uh, types. And I give you a couple examples. And example one uh, is a growth rate, and the second one's going to be a decay rate. And um, so example one, the number of bacteria present in a culture at time t obeys the law of uninhibited growth. And in one class, I discuss what an uninhibited means. So you'll have to come to class to kind of get the idea of what that is. Um, where n of t equals 500 times e to the 0.023t. So, uh, so a lot of these things you, got, you already know about the problem before you start. The 500 is what you start with. That's the initial amount number of bacteria. The 0.023 is the growth rate. So it would be 2.3%. So... Uh, but anyway, that's the idea of, uh, of a growth rate. That's how you know it's a growth rate. Anyway, it's positive. So the answer is, uh, there's some questions here. Determine the initial amount of the bacteria. And remember, the n sub 0 is that amount, so it's just pick off that number in front of the e. That's 500. All right. It's 500. Now, let me get a different color here. I'm running out of black ink. Um, when will the number double? Okay, I want to know what time. So, how long would it take for it to double? Well, right now it has 500, and you want it to double, and if you double 500, you're wanting to know how long it takes to get to 1,000. So, in other words, you're looking for t. So, you have 1,000 equals 500 times e to the point 0.023t. So you need to solve for t, and it was a good thing we've already talk, talked about logarithms, because we need to solve this exponential equation. So as you recall, to solve for t, you got to get the exponential by itself, so you have to divide by 500. 
And so 1,000 divided by 500 is 2 equals e to the point 023t. Now, we have to use the power rule in order to get this uh, t down. So what we're going to do is take the natural log of both sides. So natural log of 2 equals the natural log of e to the point 0223t. And so it turns out to be that t is equals to the natural log of 2 divided by uh, 0.023. That's what it turns out to be. To do a little bit of math. Skip a step or two there. Okay. So if I pull out my calculator, so the natural log of 2 divided by 0.023, which will take 30.1 approximately. And remember, it's in terms of hours. So it's just like a day and lower day, a day and six hours for this, this two double. So 30.1 hours. So it's growing pretty fast. Now, it also wants to know when will the population, when will the number reach 1,800? Well, so we know how long it takes to get to 1,000. Now we want to know how long it takes to get to 1,800. So it's the same idea. You make 1,800 on the left side instead of 1,000 equals 500 e to the point 023t. And the process is exactly the same. Uh, you divide by 500. So, so 1,800 divided by 500, I think it's 1.6. Let me just make sure. I'm pretty sure. 18 divided by 5. Yeah, well, three, oh, it's actually 3.6. Yeah, 3.6. So 3.6 equals e to the point 0.023t. Okay, so now you take the natural log of both sides like we did a while ago, and you end up with natural log of 3.6 divided by 0 0.023 equals t. And then you can, uh, take the, the natural log of 3.6 and then divide that by 0.023. Now, before I give you the answer, I want you to notice something. If it takes 30 hours, about, about 30 hours to go from 500 to 1,000, so it takes it that much, that long to double. Well, to go from 1,000 to 2,000, it will take the same amount of time. So you're talking about 60.2 hours, is if you want to know how long it goes from 500 to 2,000. So it's going to take it 30 hours to go from 500 to 1,000 to double. And then it's going to take another 30 hours to go from 1,000 to 2,000. And so that's 60 hours. But now we're not going all the way to 2,000 because we're only going to get to 1,800. So we know it should be less than 60 hours. Let's see what the calculator tells me. The calculator tells me 55.7 hours approximately. So a little over two days. So, and so that's how long it will take to get to 1800. So, now example two is a half life problem. And it says the half life of a certain radioactive substance is 1250 years. Uh, 10 grams are present now. And how long, how much will be present in 300 years? So, it's a very slow decay because it took, it takes it 1250 years. Uh, more than a millennium to go from 10 down to 5. So it's a very bad radioactive substance here. So it takes it takes uh, that long to go just go down from 10 to 5. Now it would take another 1250 years to go from 5 down to 2.5. So we're talking about a long time just to go down to 2.5. So but anyway, we'll look at the formula. And so we have to kind of create the formula ourselves. So n equals 10 times e to the kt. And you're like, well, you don't know what the, you know what the K is? No, we have to figure that out. You like, well, how are you going to figure that out uh, with the information provided? I'm going to use the half life to figure it out, because I know it takes it 1,250 years to go from 10 down to five. So I got everything in here that I know except for the K. I can solve for that. So five equals 10 e to the K, 1250. So it takes it 1,250 years to go from 10 down to 5. And now you solve this one, kind of like you did example 1 here, except you're solving for K instead of T. And so that will give us a working formula. 
So let's do that. So I like to first divide by 10. And so it's going to be 0.5 equals e to the 1250k. And then take the natural log of both sides. And I get k equals the natural log of 0.5 divided by 1250. And we're going to go out to about four decimal places, maybe even five if it's not if it's got a lot of zeros in it. So the natural log of 0.5 divided by 1250. Give me a syntax error because I hit a minus on the end of it. And it is negative, or this is k, and notice it is negative. It better be because it's going down. So it's negative. 0 0.0005. 0 now that's not good enough for me. I want to go a couple more out. So it's negative 0 0.000545 approximately. So that is what this k is. Now we have a working formula. N equals 10 e to the negative 0 0.000545 times the t. And now all they want to know is how much is present in 300 years. So what do you think? If you said putting 300 in for the t, you would be right. So, so it would be 10 times e to the negative 0 0.000545. Look at a really small decay rate. It's a really small number there. Times 300. Now I will tell you one thing. It is, it's going to be more than 5 because it takes 1,250 years to go from 10 down to 5. So it's going to have more than about 5 grams in it. Somewhere between 5 and 10, I suspect. Probably closer to 10 than it is to 5. So let's see what we have here. So 10 and I get 8.49 Okay, and that would be grams. So just just under eight and a half grams. So three centuries go by and you still almost have as much as what you started with. A little less. But uh, and it's because the K rate is so small and the half-life takes so long. So but anyway, this is 6.8 first part. Coming up next will be 6.8 second part. So hold on tight.